नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स एट्थ ऑफ मे एट फाइव ओ क्लॉक सी ए इंटर कॉस्टिंग पेपर गॉट ओवर आई गॉट सम मैसेज फ्रॉम द स्टूडेंट दैट द पेपर वॉज क्वाइट नाइस इट स्टार्ट टू ट्रेंड ऑन ट्विटर हमारे एक प्रोफेसर ने हमको बोला कि सर द पेपर वॉज वेरी डिफिकल्ट आई थॉट लाइक ईच एंड एवरी टाइम लेट्स नॉट ओनली ट्राई टू रिव्यू द पेपर लेट्स ट्राई टू गिव द कम्प्लीट सजेस्टेड और वही वाला काम मैं अभी भी करने जा रहा हूँ कंप्लीट सजेस्टेड आई एम ट्राइंग टू गिव यू ओके नॉट सॉल्विंग एज सच बट कंप्लीट सजेस्टेड आई एल सॉल्व आई एल गिव यू द सोल्यूशन ऑल्सो नाउ टू टाइप्स ऑफ पीपल कैन प्लीज ट्राई टू वॉच दिस वीडियो फर्स्ट हुज एग्जामिनेशन इज देर इन नवम्बर ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड ऑनवर्स एंड दो स्टूडेंट्स who are fearful sir i will only be giving tax paper if in costing i can expect around 50% or more or 40% or more depends upon you those people can be watching because i got few queries from the students sir i don't think i will be giving tax paper because my costing paper was bad now for those students you can try to be checking for all other students who feel i should not be preparing this video don't watch this video watch it after your exams or it is your call you want to be watching or not okay now <coughs> ICAI had launched a conceptual paper like last time even this time it was all a concept based paper as a teacher my honest duty is to ensure that i teach all concepts so that no matter what situation comes in real life you can always apply these concepts to those situations my duty is not that i try to do every type of question okay because else it becomes a memory game and costing or any other subject in ca course is not supposed to be a memory game it is supposed to be a concepts thing so therefore you should be knowing concepts although like always all of the question that were there were almost quite identical to the question that we all have solved so in this suggested that i have done i have done few things every question it is from which chapter that i have printed it is for how many marks that i have printed it is similar to which question in our book i have printed apart from that in this suggested where is the solution that page number is there example question number 1a uh, belongs to job and uh, batch costing it was there for 5 marks although in our book i have put it with the theory of eoq so therefore it's chapter number 2 in our book apart from that the solution of that you will be getting on page number 2 so this is the page number 2 so this will be your only one stop solution for your costing purposes okay last time also we all had done this on the same day and when ic had released the suggested those were exactly same as whatever uh, suggested we all had given okay so was paper tough was paper easy honestly the paper is always tough for those people who have not prepared and papers are quite reasonable for those people who prepare and who don't try to have any shortcuts who try to do each and every chapter one thing that had happened in this exam you have 15 chapters in costing there was not even one single chapter that was skipped by the institute every chapter from chapter number 1 till chapter number 15 you name it and it is over here material costing then labor costing then overheads activity based costing cost sheet reconciliation job and batch costing contract costing process joint products by products your standard marginal your operating costing budgetary control everything was there in your paper so in case you have skipped something hard luck but then in case you do not pass in this that is not one thing that i hope for but in case you do not pass then ensure that for every subject you do complete things complete things means there should not be any single thing that you all skip as such okay let's start away to do the things so question number 1 question number 1 was on job and batch costing in our module i have put it in our book we have put it in material costing because it is similar to the theory of uh, economic order quantity so let's start uh tsk limited manufactures a variety of products okay uh <clears throat> further the annual demand for one of its product x is estimated to be 135000 so therefore this figure is supposed to be a a stands for quantity produced of finished goods for one entire year product x is to be manufactured is is to be manuf is manufactured done in batches english was bit bad but you excuse them setup cost of each each batch is 3375 so therefore this in terms of our symbol we call that thing as ca you might be using a different symbol inventory holding cost is 5 per unit that is supposed to be ci 
it is expected that demand of product x would be uniform throughout the year okay required first calculate economic batch order quantity ebq for product x okay then second part assuming that company has a policy of manufacturing 7500 units of x per batch calculate the additional cost as compared to the cost incurred as per economic batch size in uh, as computed in one above okay so therefore the answer now answer in this case is very simple a is there with you ca is there with you ci is there with you you apply your formula economic batch size is equal to square root of 2 aca divided by ci okay so therefore you do that answer will be coming to how much beta 13500 units now once you are do that that is your end of this particular part part second uh in part second those guys are asking in case you have a policy of manufacturing 7500 units per run then in that particular case uh how much in case you have a policy of manufacturing 7500 units per run how much will be the extra cost so therefore calculate t two times once using your economic batch size quantity that is 13500 so a by q into ca plus q by 2 into ci 135 upon 13500 into your hold uh, into your setup cost plus 13500 upon 2 into 5 is equal to 67500 okay and then they have a policy of manufacturing 7500 units over here so therefore apply the formula once more 13500 becomes 7500 obviously cost is going to be increasing they want the difference of this cost and this cost that will be coming to 12000 okay straight simple question absolutely nothing so difficult in this particular question okay further this is question number 1a question number 1b this was on labor costing smc company limited is producing a particular design of toys under the following existing incentive system normal working in the week 48 hours late shift in the week 12 hours okay normal working the rate of payment is 150 per hour late shift is going to be 300 so they all work for 48 hours that is their normal hours we pay them at the rate of 150 for late shift we all pay them to how much beta 300 you calculate this you calculate this that will be the current payment as on today further average output per operator for 60 hours per week including the late shift is nothing but 80 toys okay so this is the average output that like you know a worker gives in 60 hours so 60 hours will mean 48 hours plus in this case your 12 hours over here that is this figure plus this particular figure further the company's uh, management has now decided to implement labor cost system with either the rowan plan or the halse premium plan in order to increase output eliminate the late shift the overtime and reduce the labor cost okay the following information is obtained standard time for 10 toys is 7 and a half hours so therefore for 10 toys workers should be taking how many hours beta 7 and a half hours further time rate is 150 as usual okay further assuming that operator works for 48 hours in a week now they will not be working for 60 hours because we want to be avoiding that late shift and produces 100 toys okay calculate the weekly earnings of one operator under so one sec actual output is how many toys here 100 toys okay so therefore for 10 toys we should have taken 7 and a half hours for 100 toys we should have taken 100 into 7.5 upon 10 we should have taken to how many hours here 75 hours okay so calculate existing uh, time rate rowan plan and halse plan take 50% bonus rate okay we shall be doing that two easier question first one under the existing rate 48 hours into 150 plus 12 hours into 300 that's your first answer i might have done exactly the same particular thing so part b existing scheme of time rate 48 into 150 plus 12 into 300 this is the thing okay further now see for halse roman no you require two things beta sorry you require three things time allowed time taken time saved uh and then you require basic wage rate so the basic wage rate is 150 per hour standard time means time allowed here for 100 units is equal to 75 uh, i just computed that less for 100 units they have taken how many hours 48 hours so our say will be 27 we subtract both of them basic wages will be 48 into 150 that is uh, 7200 then bonus under row 1 is time saved upon time allowed into basic wages so 27 upon 75 into 7200 is equal to 2592 you add up this figure and this particular figure you will arrive at the answer under 
the Halsey scheme basic wages will always remain same. But the bonus is 50% of time saved into rate per hour. 50% of time saved into rate per hour 2025. You add up this, you add up this, this will be the total wages. Simple straightforward question. One information that was of no use in this particular question that was this that is currently they all produce 80 toys. It might have been of some use if they would have told you calculate the labor cost per unit under the existing scheme and under the new scheme. Else in this question it was of no use. Okay, further. Question number part C of that. Now this is straightforward question on CVP analysis and marginal costing. Okay, a straightforward question. Nothing much in this particular question. Just you apply your basics and things will start to work out. PV ratio is 30%, margin of safety is 25%, fixed cost is 12 lakh 60. You are required to find out break even sales. But our break even sales is fixed cost divided by your PV ratio. So therefore, fixed cost is there, your this figure is there. You will start to arrive at your break even sales. I might have done exactly the same thing. 12 lakh 60,000 divided by 30% will be giving you all uh, 42 lakh. So therefore, this was your first answer. Take second, total sales at present, total sales C. Margin of safety is 25% of total sales. So if your sales is 100, your break-even sales is how much beta? 75. Margin of safety is how much? 25. This break-even sales is how much? 42 lakhs. Okay. So just cross multiply. No, I guess this figure will be 56 lakhs and margin of safety will be 14 lakhs. Okay. So I guess those guys want total sales at present. So total sales at present will be 56 lakhs. Okay. If margin of safety is 25%, break even sales will be 75%. No. So I might, I might have done 42 lakhs divided by 75%. So 56 lakhs. Okay. This was your part two of the question. Part three. Propose sales value if the company wants to earn present profit after reduction of 10% fixed cost. Okay, first work out the present profit. How do you get your present profit? Many ways, if you have got the same answer, it's perfectly okay. I thought I'll compute like this. So your present profit will be present margin of safety. That was 14 lakhs that I computed into your PV ratio of 30%. So therefore 4 lakh 20. Add up your reduced fixed cost. So reduced fixed cost will be 12 lakh 60,000 into how much percent beta? 90% because the fixed cost will be getting reduced by how much percent here in this case uh, 10%. So 12 lakh 60 minus the 10% part. So therefore that will be coming to this. Now you add up your uh, profit plus your fixed cost. You'll start to arrive at contribution. Divide this particular thing by PV ratio. You'll start to arrive at sales. So this is the new level of sales further. All these questions are for single mark each. Okay, so no need to bother much about the presentation part. Sales in value to be made if profit of 20% on sales, assuming fixed cost remains unchanged. Okay, so fixed cost will be remaining same only. Now see, those guys are saying what? That we want a profit of 20% on sales. Let sales be sales only. Profit will be 20% of sales. So 20% will mean 0.2. So we multiply sales into PV ratio. We reach till where beta contribution. From there you subtract fixed cost. You will arrive at what profit. So sales into current PV ratio was how much? 30% minus your fixed cost should be giving you all profit. You solve it, you will start to arrive at sales. Okay. That also part all, all together done. Further, uh, part number five, new margin of safety. If sales value at present as compared as computed in point number two decreases by 12.5%. So see new sales, if it decreases by 12.5%, so will become 87.5% will become 56 lakhs into 87.5, 49 lakhs. New margin of safety will be 49 lakhs. That is sales minus break even sales. So therefore new margin of safety will be 7 lakh rupees. Okay. This is all simple stuff. There was nothing tough in these particular questions. Just try to verify whatever you all have done. One thing, anybody who did not appear for this particular exam, examination I will always recommend that please solve the question paper once yourself okay and then try to look at the answer it's always a better 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 thing okay further part number d now this question no was on operating costing our last question that was there on toll companies okay in our book Plus in the test series also I purposely asked a question bit similar to this although not exactly same let's start it off with part d RST toll plaza built an 80 kilometers long highway 
between two cities and operates a toll plaza to collect tolls from passing the vehicles using the highway. The company is estimated 50,000 lightweight, 12,000 uh, medium weight and 10,000 heavyweight vehicles will be using the highway in one month in the outward journey and same number in the return. So these many people, if suppose like, you know, uh, this is the toll, 50,000 lightweight vehicles will pass from here till there and 50,000 lightweight vehicles will be passing from there till here also. Okay, further. As per the government notification, the vehicles used for the medical uh, emergencies, members of the parliament and essential uh, services are exempt from toll charges. It is estimated that 10% of this is important. Lightweight vehicles will pass the highway for such use. So 10% will not be paying toll. So for all purposes, no, 50,000 will be actually made 45,000 because out of that 10% are not going to be paying tolls here further. It's a policy of the company that if the vehicles return within 24 hours of their outward journey, the toll fare will be reduced by 25% automatically. Like that happens, I guess, in most of the cases in uh, fast tag uh, also. If you go and if you come back on the same particular day, then your toll gets reduced, no? Okay. So your toll will be reduced by how much? 25%. This number, please do remember. And it is estimated that 30% of the chargeable light vehicles will return within the specified time frame. So out of all the uh, people that are there 30 percent of the lightweight vehicles will return within the same day so therefore those guys will be getting concession that's a company's policy the toll charges for medium weight vehicles is to be fixed at two and a half times of the lightweight and that of the heavyweight will be two times that of the medium weight okay the toll expenses and the maintenance cost for a month is 59 lakh 9090 okay the company requires 10 percent of the toll cost to cover up for interest and other costs so this figure you add 10 percent to it that much is the revenue that we all want okay so that thing is one calculation that i have done i guess right in the beginning in the suggested also so this figure if you increase it by 10 percent i think comes to around 65 lakhs let me just try to be seeing that uh revenue is equal to cost plus profit it's over here okay so this figure plus 10 percent comes to 65 lakhs what we have to be doing calculate the toll rate for each type of the vehicle if the concession facilities are not available on the return journey i'll solve that thing first so there are 50,000 lightweight vehicles 12,000 uh medium weight heavy weight will be 10,000 now let's double them up because these are only the outward same number on the return also so 50,000 into 2 should be 1 lakh then over here 24 over here 20,000 but out of 1 lakh 10 percent will be exempted no so therefore I've made that figure as 90,000 over here complete number over here the complete number okay charges per vehicle let it be x those guys are saying no concession is available over here 2.5x and this rate will be double of this particular rate so the total amount that we will collect will be 90,000 x plus this into this will be 60,000 X plus this into this will be 1 lakh X. In the end, our collection will be 2 lakh 50,000 X. 2 lakh 50,000 X should be equal to our collection. Our collection means our revenue. Our revenue will be 65 lakh. So therefore, work out your X, work out 2.5 X and work out your 5 X. These are the three kind of tolls that will be there as such. Okay. That's it about point number one. Point number two, you should have got this answer. This was not very tough. Okay. Second part, you might have got confused. Okay. That could be the case. Let's see. Now over here, point number two, calculate the toll rate per vehicle that will be charged from light vehicles. If the return journey concession is available, assuming that revenue earned from lightweight vehicles calculated in option number one remains the same. Those guys are saying that now that concession is available. Okay, fine. But then those guys are saying that total revenue that is there, your total revenue that is there, no, should have remained same. Okay. If the total revenue should have remained same, no, what I'm saying, let's compute that total revenue. See, your total revenue uh, that we were getting from lightweight vehicles was nothing but 90,000 X. Okay. So 90,000 X from everybody, we had collected 26. So therefore our total collection from the lightweight vehicles will be 23 lakh 40,000. Okay. Now those guys are saying that this should still be our collection. But now we are going to be having concessional rate for 30% of the people. Okay. Because 30% will go and come back on the same day. Okay. Now understand this thing properly. 50,000 people going and coming becomes 1 lakh, but 10% will not be paying. So 90,000. Now 90,000 is going and coming both. Out of that 30%, 30%. That is 90,000, 30% will be 27,000. Some people could have calculated like this. That is like, you know, 
थाउजेंड इंटू थर्टी परसेंट दैट विल बिकम थर्टीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड इंटू टू और यू कैन डायरेक्टली टेक थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ दिस नाइनटी थाउजेंड ऑल्सो आंसर विल बी कमिंग सेम सो दीज गाइज इन एंड विल बी पेइंग कंसेशनल ओके एंड ऑल अदर गाइज इन दिस केस विल बी पेइंग नॉर्मल सो नॉर्मल फिगर आई विल एडेड बी एक्स द कंसेशनल फिगर विल बी पॉइंट सेवन फाइव एक्स सो ऑल दीज ट्वेंटी सेवन थाउजेंड वहीकल्स विल बी पेइंग पॉइंट सेवन फाइव एक्स यू रिमेंबर ट्वेंटी सेवन थाउजेंड इंक्लूड गोइंग एंड कमिंग बोथ हा ओके and this 63000 will be paying x over here so therefore 27000 into 0.75x if you compute on our calc this is the collection that i will be doing from those particular vehicles who so will return within 24 hours and hence will get that concessional thing and over here 63000 into x so therefore this figure will be 63000x but the moment you all do that this plus this should be equal to the collection from the lightweight vehicles that originally had to be maintained had to be maintained means 23 lakh 40000 okay that's it so this figure is equal to 23 lakh uh, 40000 as for me x should be this and 0.75 x should be this we got to be saying will be the charges for those people who come within uh, 24 hours so for them the charges will be this do remember ultimately these guys will be paying this while going and this much while coming so therefore even if you have mentioned the answer as this into 2 that should be all together fine okay now that's it about this particular question this was question number 1 part d now see question number 1 like uh, always i say tries to do mix and match of all the chapters okay so this was your this part question number 2 now in question number 2 a limited furnished the following information for the months from 1st of jan to 30th of april number of working days okay production in units per day if you multiply this and this this will start to give you total units that were getting produced raw material purchases by weight to the total 4 months so if you add up this 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 i guess this should be coming to 100% yeah 21 plus 26 47 47 plus 53 correct 100 so whatever you are purchasing in these 4 months no that how much you are purchasing each and every month so 21% of all the 4 months purchases will be done in this particular month so on and so forth purchase price of raw material 10 12 13 11 okay quantity of raw material per unit of the product 4 kg so whenever you produce 1 unit of the product 4 kg will be required so see jan month you are going to be working for these many days every day you will be producing these many units you multiply both these numbers and then multiply by 4 this will be the quantity to be consumed of raw material in this month opening stock of raw material 1st of jan 6020 kg cost was 63210 if you'll be dividing this you'll start to arrive at whatever was the cost at which opening stock was valued closing stock in this case is 5100 okay all the purchases are made on the start of the month okay required calculate the consumption of raw material in kgs month by month and in total calculate month wise quantity and value of raw material purchase so here make a consumption budget here make a purchase budget prepare price slc account using fifo method almost the same question we had in our chapter of marginal costing which was clubbed with budgetary control okay now so in the solution what i have done over here listen Jan month we are going to be working for these many days. Every day we produce these many units. So therefore, you multiply. This is the total uh, production that is going to be there. <coughs> Then once you all do that, multiply by four kgs per unit. This will be the consumption that will happen in each and every month and the total as such. Okay. Second, those guys have told you make a purchase budget, but purchase budget you directly cannot make it month by month. Okay. You will have to make it to overall months. And how do you all uh, do that? Quantity consumed. Okay. Plus closing stock you had with you, less opening stock you had with you. This will give you quantity purchased of raw material. Okay. Now quantity purchased of raw material. Out of that, twenty-one percent. So therefore, this into twenty-one percent. Then the next number, this into twenty-six percent, will come over here. So on and so forth. Once you all uh, do that, multiply by purchase cost per unit. These are the purchase cost per unit, and your this particular part is also over. So therefore, your purchase cost in rupees is also over here. Okay. Kindly check your answers, please. Okay. Then third one, your SLC account, a very simple one. Okay, but I'll just say the things uh, once more. Uh, in your SLC account, you always have three columns: receipts, issues, balance. Okay. So first of Jan, you had this much amount of opening stock that was given to you, and this is the cost. So therefore, please divide. You will start to arrive at this rate. 
Purchases will happen. Purchases was there in a purchase budget, bit. A purchase budget was over here. Okay, purchase budget was over here. So therefore, this thing you are going to be having four times purchasing in each month. You can try to be seeing exactly the same numbers and these particular numbers and these particular rates must have come at the beginning of each and every month. So therefore, purchases, 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 and purchases was recorded. Okay. and then the consumption had started to be happening based upon in this case your fifo method so i guess you can try to be seen that uh, in jan month your consumption was how much beta 5000 now 5000 you are going to be following first in first out method okay so see this was your opening okay you purchase this much more so therefore you will be having two lots over here that is one thing and then 5000 units you issue You issue based upon FIFO method, so therefore ten point five. So therefore, out of six zero two zero, this much is gone. This will be the balance at ten point five, and this will be the amount. And this lot, as it is, will be remaining same over here. Okay. Then next one will start to be coming. Purchase more. Once you all purchase more, you will be having three lots over here, the older two lots, and one new lot over here. Then after that, how much consumption has happened? See over here, consumption that has happened in this case is five two eight zero. Five two eight zero. Once you put it down over here. Five two eight zero will be out of two lots. Okay, out of two lots in this case will be one zero two zero, and the balance in this case will be this particular lot. So I guess this will total up to that particular figure. Ah, uh, just a sec. Ah, uh, this number was how much, beta? Five two eight zero. So therefore, one zero two zero, whatever is a balancing figure. So therefore, this at ten point five, this figure at ten over here. So uh, this much is gone out of four three six eight. This much amount is consumed. The balance over here. Okay. Then again, you purchase. Again, there will be uh, three lots. Again, you all consume. Okay. And then in that case, the last month, once you purchase, there will be two lots. Then again, you issue. In end, obviously, the total of both these no should be your closing stock. Also, you already had your closing stock bit over here. Your closing stock was how much? Five one zero zero. That is a small check for you. That in this case, this will be your closing stock. So therefore, the total of these two is going to be your final closing stock as on the last day. Okay. Now that's it about this particular answer. Further. Ah. Uh, This is your this particular question and ten marks was actually good amount for this. Okay, further. Now this question was on contract costing. I really like this question, but a very simple one. There was nothing great in this question. Read please. B Limited had taken a contract for seventy lakh rupees and had furnished the following information. You have first year, you have second year. Okay. Material cost, labor, direct expenses, indirect expenses, work certified, work uncertified. Obviously, second year must be marking end of the contract because the contract price was seventy lakh rupees, and at the end of second year, entire work is certified. Nothing is uncertified, so contract gets over within, in this case, uh, two years only. Plant costing three lakh forty was brought on the commencement of the contract. Okay, depreciation of eighty five thousand per annum is charged on the plant on SLM basis. So eighty five thousand you all charge in year one also year two. So apart from all these particular expenses, no, apart from these four expenses, you have what extra over here, beta depreciation. Okay, further there was a provision for escalation clause in the contract. For increase in material rate and wages in the second year only. Okay. so there was a provision for escalation clause in the contract for increase in material wage uh, material rate and wage rate but only in the second year uh, only in the second year not in the first year this line is important many people i think would have skipped this particular part okay this is standard material for the first year and second year in this case was 12000 each year At the rate of ninety, whereas actual consumption was twelve thousand five hundred at the rate of hundred per unit in the first year, and thirteen thousand units at the rate of one zero five per unit in the second year. Okay, standard labor cost in the first year was ten thousand hours, and in the second year was nine thousand hours. Standard wage rate was one twenty per hour. The firm had paid for ten thousand hours at the rate of one twenty five per hour in the first year, and eight thousand eight hundred hours at the rate of one thirty per hour in the second year. Okay. Now this information, no, I have tried to accumulate in a table because the information is a bit more. I'll show you that table in just a while. So standards are also there for each and every year. Actual are also there for each and every year. Although do remember, escalation clause was only applicable for which year? Year second year. That thing is important. Okay. Now 
prepare a contract account for both the years without considering escalation clause this was supposed to be too simple a part see what i have done over here uh contract account all the expenses plus your depreciation on the credit side you will have work certified <coughs> and work uncertified in the next year your closing wip starts to become opening wip no so therefore that has come over here plus all the expenses of the next year this will be giving you all work certified okay work certified in this case this will start to be giving you all the profit over here this is the profit of the second year without considering the escalation clause okay now that's it about this particular question so therefore you will get your marks for these two profits here one is the profit of year one other is a profit in this case of year two okay so this was a profit as such of year two this particular figure so just check these now now part two of the question listen compute the total value of the contract by considering escalation clause now escalation clause was only supposed to be applicable for year two okay in when i solved it for the first time i forgot actually but then i read it in a careful manner okay listen now what i have done before i calculate escalation clause amount i did something that actually makes my part three also a bit easy standard actual okay now based upon the information that was there how much material was supposed to get used uh, what was supposed to be the rate in actual how much material got used and how much was the actual rate i ca calculated the standard cost as well as the actual cost i did the same thing for material and labor let me tell you from where i got this data from this last paragraph uh, standard material for the first year and the second year was 12,000 at the rate of 90. So therefore you see this 12,000 at the rate of 90 for the first as well as for the second year. Okay, whereas actual consumption was 12,500 at the rate of 100. That is this number. Further in this case, uh, 13,000 is at the rate of 105. So 13,000 at the rate of 105. These two figures will also be matching with your question exactly. Because if you all see your question, it had these costs, no material cost and uh, the material cost, your actual cost further then for as far as the labor goes standard labor hours for the first year was 10,000 and for second year that was 9,000 so therefore 10,000 9,000 okay standard wage rate was 120 per hour so 120 120 okay further the firm had paid for 10,000 hours at the rate of 125 okay and then the last one and 8,800 hours at the rate of 130 8,800 hours at the rate of 130 so therefore this was the data that was there I just made this table for calculation of something but see escalation clause escalation clause whenever you are trying to compute escalation clause escalation clause is not for the efficiency or inefficiency on the part of the contractor so therefore what we all do we all take standard rate we all subtract the actual rate the same question we all have in our books here so therefore you subtract the difference multiply by standard quantity or by standard hours if we take actual quantity and actual hours we will reflect efficiency and inefficiency on the part of the contractor for which there is no escalation claim here okay now when i calculated i calculated for year one and year two but then i did a strike through okay so therefore only for year two the escalation clause amount is 1 lakh 80 and it is 90 over here so therefore original contract price was 70 lakhs increase it by 180 increase it by 90 this will be the total amount as such okay now this was your part two of the question in part three compute the total increase or decrease in the cost in the material cost and wages for both the years now they are just asking you for time pass calculate the increase and decrease in the material cost and labor cost so therefore this minus this will give you increase this minus this will give you the increase in material cost this minus this this minus this will give you the increase in the labor cost now this only i bifurcated year wise because those guys have asked me for year wise okay this will be the increase in year one this will be the increase in year two okay that's it now this is your question number two to be very honest if i was in uh, your space question number one and question number two till now i will not be having any tension about it question number three this on budgetary control come your cvp analysis pqr limited manufactures three products x y and z the output for the current year was 2 lakh 50 thousand units of x then this much of y and this much of z okay selling price is 1.2 times sorry of x is 1.2 times of that of z whereas product y can be sold at double the price at which z can be sold okay z can be sold at profit of 20 percent on marginal cost marginal cost means variable cost so first thing that you all can be doing find out the selling price of z if you get of z you will get of x and then you will be getting of y also okay 
further product x product y product z direct material okay direct wages okay raw material used for manufacturing for all the three products is the same direct wages are paid at the rate of 4 per hour so therefore at the rate of 4 per hour that gentleman who has given me this question paper he has calculated these hours also for us okay so therefore 4 hours 6 hours and 4 hours okay further total variable overheads of the company are this sorry the total overheads of the company is this much out of which 1 rupee per hour is variable and the rest is fixed okay in the next year now this is the data for the next year it is expected that sales of product x and of product z will increase by 12 percent 15 percent respectively okay and that of y will be declining by five percent the total overheads of the company is estimated to be this much okay the variable overheads of rupee one per labor hour will remain unchanged it is anticipated that all other costs will remain same for the next year and there is no opening or closing stock okay selling price for each product will remain unchanged in the next year okay required a budget showing the current position and the position for the next year indicating total product wise contribution profit for the company as a whole okay now see this question no not very difficult only one silly error that i think many people can be making see in case you want to be solving this question first thing is try to calculate marginal cost prop marginal cost will mean the variable cost that will include direct material direct labor don't forget the variable overheads so for that we require the hours those we have calculated and then at the rate of one so that is whatever i must have done in the solution also so question number three a see what i have done over here uh direct material okay i've copied so direct material 20 20 20 then direct labor 16 24 16 so 16 24 16 and then we calculate those hours and variable over is at the rate of one per hour so therefore those will be these particular numbers okay now see once you all do that this will give you the marginal cost once you compute the marginal cost now see for z what information was there z will be sold at a profit of 20 percent on marginal cost okay so marginal cost is 40 na 40 plus 20 percent so therefore will be sold at 48 now 48 will be the price for uh, z what was there for x beta x will be 1.25 times of z so therefore 48 into 1.25 will make it 60 okay and y will be double the price at which z can be sold so therefore if this is 48 this figure will be how much 96 you subtract that will start to give you contribution multiplied by number of units that those guys are told that will start to give you all total contribution but from total contribution you need to subtract your fixed cost now fixed cost listen very carefully now what i have done not necessary you have to make that working note in this case hours per unit okay hours per unit <clears throat> multiplied by number of units will give you total hours total hours comes to this figure these many hours variable overheads will be at the rate of one per hour means it will be this only from total overheads you subtract your variable overheads you start to arrive at fixed overheads okay so therefore from fixed overheads sorry from contribution you subtract your fixed cost i'll start to give you your profit over here exactly the same thing you will have to be doing for next year also but for next year few changes have taken place which changes have taken place over here now see uh, all this information all this information has undergone a change why because those guys are told that units are going to be changing see over here those guys are told in the next year sales will be increasing by 12 percent and 15 percent for x and z so therefore 2 lakh 50 and this particular thing i increased by 12 and 15 percent over here so therefore by 12 percent and by 15 percent but for why we decrease it by five percent and then exactly the same process i have done although here the total overheads have changed this amounts to your 41 like 88,000. you work out the new numbers this should be your final profit okay that is whatever we all have done over here okay that's it so this is your current position as well as this is your new position over here now in red i have always written once again that uh, like you know this question is where in our textbook so therefore in case you are our student you can always try to trace these questions back okay further now this was a question on advanced cost sheet following information is given for the month of april okay so opening stock of finished goods you know the opening you don't know the closing and that also you know in units stock of raw material uh, opening as well as closing further 
रॉ मटेरियल परचेज कैरेज इनवर्स दैट इज पार्ट ऑफ योर परचेज कॉस्ट ओनली डायरेक्ट वेजेस पेड रॉयल्टी पेड कम्स एट पार्ट ऑफ डायरेक्ट एक्सपेंसिस परचेज ऑफ स्पेशल डिजाइन मोल्ड्स एंड पैटर्न एस्टिमेटेड लाइफ इज ट्वेल्व इयर्स सो दे फोर डिवाइड बाई ट्वेल्व योर स्पेशल मोल्ड्स एंड ऑल इज ऑल्सो पार्ट ऑफ योर डायरेक्ट एक्सपेंसिस ओनली ट्राई टू रिकॉल नाउ पावर फ्यूल एंड हॉलेज टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट नो पावर एंड फ्यूल कम्स एज पार्ट ऑफ योर डायरेक्ट एक्सपेंसिस बट हॉलेज नो एक्चुअली कम्स एज पार्ट ऑफ योर फैक्ट्री ओवर हेल्थ so now but these three items are together only and it is given factory i try to be thinking if that word is uh, given to you know then what we should be doing before that again i am saying power and fuel should be coming as part of direct expenses haulage should be coming as part of factory overheads but now if it is a combined expense i can only take it at one single place beta now which single place to be taking now see in direct expenses all those costs come which are specific in nature i think this word factory is given to you so that it is not specific in nature okay so therefore 70600 over here <coughs> now in this case no uh, so what i have done i have taken this particular thing as part of factory over it i have written a note also for it okay further research and development for improving the production process this has a separate head only i think below the wip then uh, primary packing this also has a separate head now admin overheads no i have taken it as administration related to production now my logic goes like this but before i'll say the next sentence also salaries and wages for the supervisor and foreman this is nothing but factory overheads now my logic for taking this administration related uh, to production is a very simple thing if you see this entire table no they only give you basically all those expenses which are incurred till factory so therefore means they are related to production so this also must be related to production because every other cost that is your selling up and so on is given separately below in any case this is just an assumption and i have written a note also that administration i have taken as part of production alternately it can be taken as part of a uh, general also okay your answers will be changing with that i i don't know what institute will be doing but i think so this makes a proper logic because all these expenses are given basically like you know in relation to production so i think this also must be administration related to production only okay further opening stock of finished goods is 8.05 per unit okay During the month, one lakh fifty-two thousand units were produced and one fifty-two six hundred units were sold. One one sec. Opening stock was two thousand five hundred. How much you are producing more? One lakh fifty-two. How much you are selling, beta? One fifty-two six hundred. So therefore, your closing stock will be how many units? Nineteen hundred units. The company follows your FIFO method. Okay. Assume that one production. Sorry, I'll read this line also. Selling and distribution expenses are charged at twenty paise per unit. Okay. assume one production cycle is completed in one month fine now this is just to tell you that every expense that is incurred for certain batch of goods also should be recognized in that particular month only don't carry it forward required prepare a cost sheet for this month ended showing all these particular elements in our cost sheet all these things will come calculate the selling price if profit of 20% is charge on sales now for this no you should be only knowing the format of the cost sheet yeah so what i have done direct material consumed so before that quantity produced of finished goods quantity sold of finished goods okay direct material this is there add purchases carriage inverse is part of your purchases less your closing stock this will give you direct material consumed direct labor was uh, directly there two things in your direct expenses one is the uh, royalty one is that mold and pattern okay this will be giving you your total this will be your prime cost add factory overheads in factory overheads i think we all have uh, two things amount paid for power and fuel that i told you all the note and the haulage also to be honest okay that note i have given that i have taken as part of factory overheads alternately if it is assumed to be specifically for any job it can be taken as part of direct expenses also okay this will give you gross factory cost adjust your wip stock that will give you net factory cost or simply your factory cost add research and development cost okay add admin overheads which are related to production okay add your primary packing this will give you your cop your cop per unit approximately comes to 8.49 okay 
add opening stock 2500 valued at 8.05 multiply both of them you'll get this we have to follow the fifo method so closing stock will get valued at 8.49 this will be your closing stock over here you will do that you'll start to arrive at cogs add up your snd snd is 0.2 per unit into number of units that you have sold beta these are the number of units that you have sold you multiply both of them this will be your snd get your cost of sales okay this is your answer to part one in part two in this particular case uh profit is 20 percent of sales so therefore this will become 80 you get this particular number you added this will be your selling price okay and two notes i have recorded one is for the admin overheads and other is for the power okay now that's it about this particular question then question number four a ABC produces product X that passes through three processes R, S, and T. Three types of material J, K, and L are used in the ratio of 40, 40, 20 in process R. Okay, process R is the first process. The output of each process is transferred to the next process. Process loss is 10% of total input in each process. So, in each process, there will be a loss of uh, how much percent beta? 10%. Okay, further. At the stage of output of process T, a byproduct Z is emerging. And the ratio of the main product X to byproduct Z is 80-20. So in the last process, no, last process is a process G. Whenever the last process gets over, there are two products that emerge. One of them is your main product that is nothing but X. And other one is your byproduct that Z. They come out in the ratio of 80-20. Selling price of X is 60 per kg. Okay. The company produced 14, 580 kgs of product X. This number is super important. Further. Material price J is purchased at this price, K is purchased at this price, L is purchased at this price and process cost are as follows. R in process R, variable cost is incurred at the rate of 5 per kg. In S in T, fixed cost of input is going to be this much. Okay. In every process, these are the other costs. Do remember in process R no, apart from these particular costs, there will be basic material cost also. Material cost will be incurred for J, K as well as L over here. Okay. Further. The byproduct Z cannot be processed further and can be sold at the rate of 30 per kg at the split off stage. Okay. So Z cannot be processed further, it will be sold at 30. There is no realizable value of losses at any stage. Present a statement showing apportionment of joint costs on the basis of, see over here, sales value of X and Z at the split off point and the profitability of X and byproduct Z over here. Okay. Now see, for this thing, what I have done is a very simple part. What I have done over here, listen, uh, in the solution, see, if you input 100 kgs over here, okay, in case you input 100 kgs, 10 is lost, 90 comes out, again 10% is lost, 81 comes out, again 10% is lost, okay, so therefore output in the last process is 72.9, okay. Uh, this thing gets broken up into 80 20 over here so therefore 80 is this much 20 is this much and this figure is given to you 14,580. you cross multiply these are all the numbers that you'll start to be getting so therefore in first process you input this much over here okay so on and so forth now see uh listen very carefully now what you have to be doing you have to be your last part of the question was what beta Prepare a statement showing apportionment of joint cost. You'll have to compute your joint cost. For that, I required how much I need to input in the beginning. Now, see, this input of 25,000 no happens in form of your three materials. So, therefore, whenever you input, you input J, K, and L. J, K, and L. In what ratio, beta? 40, 40, 20. So, therefore, 10,000, 10,000, and how much, beta? 5,000. And you purchase them at what particular rate? The rates are over here. 15, 9, and 7. So, therefore, 15, 9, and 7. So, what I have started to do over here? Cost in each process. Okay. Cost in each process. Listen, cost in each process, uh, material J, 10,000 kgs at the rate of 15, same way for K, same way for L. The variable cost that those guys had told you over here, beta, the variable cost, it is 5 rupees per kg, you know, so 25,000 kgs is the input at the rate of 5, 125,000 plus the fixed cost that is directly there, that is 42,000. Okay, this is the process cost in process R. Now, this will become material cost for the next process. Okay. 4 lakh 42, 20 to 500 kgs at the rate of 4.5 over here. Okay, so therefore this will be extra cost in the next process. Plus in this case, your fixed cost of how much beta? 5,000. So therefore this is the total cost till process S. Same way this will become the material cost for the next process. 
प्लस ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड टू फिफ्टी के जीज ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड टू फिफ्टी बेटा कम्स फ्रॉम हेयर ओके ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड टू फिफ्टी के जीज दैट यू विल इनपुट इन प्रोसेस टी एट वॉट पर्टिकुलर रेट थ्री पॉइंट फोर सो दे फोर थ्री पॉइंट फोर इन दिस केस इज ओवर हियर प्लस ओवर हियर फोर एट जीरो जीरो सो दे फोर फोर एट जीरो जीरो दिस इज योर फाइनल प्रोसेस कॉज दैट यू विल हैव टू ट्राई टू अपोर्शन ओके एंड यू हैव टू अपोर्शन इन द रेश ऑफ सेल्स वैल्यू हाउ डू यूर डू दैट एक्स एन जेड आउटपुट इज देयर विद यू फोर्टीन थाउजेंड फाइव एटी ओवर हियर एंड थ्री सिक्स फोर फाइव थ्री सिक्स फोर फाइव यू रिक्वायर द सेलिंग प्राइस इज एट स्प्लिट ऑफ पॉइंट ओके सो दे फोर दिस थिंग एंड दिस थिंग then this is the total joint cost is 629900 that is this particular figure you subtract sorry you apportion this cost among the two joint products in this particular ratio okay one other thing that the question has asked that i have not done i'll do that in the suggested that i'll put on the telegram channel okay uh <clears throat> Sales value minus joint cost will give you the profit. Okay, and that is whatever the question had asked, beta. That I forgot. I think in this suggested. Okay. Uh. So therefore, in this case, the profitability also we all want. So therefore, you subtract sales value. So you subtract the joint cost. You'll start to arrive at profit over here. Okay. So these should have been your answers. Further. Uh. Beta Limited produces this much, this much, and this much of A, B, and C. At present, company follows absorption costing, absorbs the overheads on the basis of direct labor hours. Now the company wants to adopt activity-based costing. Okay, the following information is given: floor area, then direct labor hours, direct machine hours, power consumption. Everything is there, beta, with you. Power consumption, whatever is a power cost, 32 percent you give to A, 28 percent to B, and 40 percent in this case to C over here. Overheads for the year. uh rates and taxes 863500 electricity expenses indirect uh, labor repairs and maintenance so 337500 okay now see uh listen very carefully in case you are going to be following activity based costing i think so rent and rates will go down in this ratio direct labor hours direct labor hours in this case uh should be going sorry uh indirect labor should be going in the ratio of uh, direct labor hours then repair and maintenance i think should be going in this particular ratio and i think electricity consumption will be going in the ratio of your power consumption that in any case will directly get divided okay so in case it is activity based costing then this will be how the things will be done so calculate the overhead rate per labor hour under absorption costing this was a super simple part you they just want absorption rate so that will be nothing but uh, boh upon bla so your boh will be nothing but total of these particular thing 3 lakh 37 33 lakh 75000 i think one zero is missing over here divided by 22500 So once you all do that, this will give you one fifty per labourer. That was the only information to be done. Okay, further part two. Part two, I have already discussed how everything will get divided. So in this case, rent and rates in the ratio of floor space, electricity expenses that break up is only there. Then uh, indirect labour in the ratio of your labourers and maintenance in this case in the ratio of machinists. Once you all do that, this will give you your total overheads divided by number of units. That will start to give you all overheads per unit. This is supposed to be the final answer as such. Okay, now this is all together done. Uh, this was your part to prepare a statement showing the overhead cost per unit for product A, B, C under activity based costing. Okay, this was your part uh, B of the question. This was not for very high marks because I think the question was also supposed to be quite simple over here. I think it was a thing only for five marks. Okay, now this is your part B of the question. Now we are uh, starting away with part C. <coughs> part C of this question. M N P company produces two products A and B. The relevant cost and sales data per unit of output is direct material, direct labor, variable factory overheads. Okay, then selling price. The availability of machine hours is limited to fifty-five thousand hours for the month. So therefore, this must be the limiting factor. The monthly demand for product A. Is five thousand units and six thousand units respectively. The fixed expenses are one lakh forty thousand per month. Variable factory overheads are four per machine hour. So now see four per machine hour. So this divided by four. So every unit must be taking ten machine hours. Twenty divided by four. Every unit must be taking five machine hours. Okay. Company can produce both the products according to the market demand. Okay. 
required calculate the product mix that will generate maximum profit in the given situation also calculate the maximum profit of the company okay this is a typical sum here on limiting factor so therefore what i have done machine hours are the limiting factor no so first thing compute the machine hours per unit that i calculated for you we need to be the market demand is 5000 6000 into 10 hours and 5 hours 10 hours and 5 hours okay so therefore 50 plus 30 these many hours we all require but i think number of hours that you all have is only limited to how much 55000 so machinas is a limiting factor if machinas is a limiting factor try to calculate contribution per machine hour so therefore selling price minus all your variable cost will start to give you contribution per unit uh this is contribution per unit uh contribution per unit divided by machine hours per unit will start to give you contribution per machine hour it's 5 and 10 so b is a first rank product and a is a second rank product once you all do that then start to be making your usual table as such okay so therefore product a product b it's a and b only no just just like yeah it's a and b only so first thing is give everything to b that it wants 6000 into 5 how many hours yeah 30000 balancing figure will be how much 25000 every unit will be taking 10 hours over here number of units 2500 multiply by contribution per unit will give you the total contribution subtract the fixed cost this will be the highest profit that is possible okay simple straightforward question as such okay then we come across your next question that is question number 5a this was on standard costing now many people in fact many professors also might be saying like you know that this question was wrong or some assumptions are required but i do not agree with that i don't think so any assumptions are required to be solving this entire question okay uh let's start it off this had material this had labor this also had your fixed overheads part okay so we will start to be doing this nice question it's not that we all have not done uh questions like this but might be that you'll have to use your basics you'll have to read the question and think properly question number 5a nc limited using your uh, uses a standard costing for manufacture of product tax the following information is available for the last week of the month okay 25000 kg of raw material was actually purchased for 3 lakh 12500 okay the expected output is 8 units of product x from each kg of raw material so from 1 kg of raw material how many units of x should come out beta 8 kg further there is no opening or closing inventory okay the material price variance and material cost variance so price variance is given to you as well as material cost variance is given to you so this is all about material what i will try to be doing i will not read the labor part and the fixed overheads i'll go over to the required part calculate the standard price per kg and standard quantity of raw material okay i'm trying to be solving material part first just don't want to be uh, complicating the things now see for material what information was there actual material 25000 kgs actual this figure was there so actual rate i calculated as a balancing figure 12.5 okay then what was there with me material price variance that was to how much beta 12500 12500 in this case no uh how do you compute material price variance standard rate minus actual rate actual rate is 12.5 into actual quantity so therefore that figure is 12500 to favorable so standard rate minus 12.5 this number i took over here will be coming to 0.5 favorable so standard rate must be a higher figure because you must have purchased at a lower figure that is why the variance was favorable no so therefore standard rate in this particular case will be 13 that's how i have got 13 so 13 has come from this working out material cost variance was 1800 adverse in the question so therefore this figure minus this figure will be 1800 adverse so therefore i guess this figure will be lower by 1800 beta okay so 312500 minus 1800 has given you this particular figure 310700 okay so once you'll get that then further uh this number upon this number will start to be giving you all this now once you get this one data that is most important and that is what i wrote over here see from 1 kg 8 units of x should have been produced no so from 23900 see this must be revised standard for actual output no this must be revised standard for actual output that is how the variances are computed so therefore 
in this case actual material sorry the standard material was 23900 kg so therefore from here this must have been the actual output so therefore actual output that is how i computed over here 191200 in case you will not get this your question is altogether gone okay uh in part 1 those are the two things that you had to be doing standard price of raw material that came to 13 and a standard quantity of raw material that had come to 23900 with that one thing of part 2 also i would like to be finishing calculate material usage variance but a usage variance will be how much you should have consumed minus how much you have consumed into the standard rate of 13 rupees okay now that's it about this particular part further this was your this thing of material but this 192 One lakh ninety one thousand two hundred is a base for everything. Okay, now I am reading everything of labor, and this was a tricky part. Nothing else was tricky actually. Listen, uh, the standard time to produce a batch of ten units is fifteen minutes. Okay, for ten units, fifteen minutes was supposed to be needed. Fifteen minutes, fifteen upon sixty, that is point two five. So therefore. This much amount of time means zero point two five hours are required. Okay. Further, the standard wage rate per hour is fifty. Okay. Further, the company employs one twenty five workers in two categories: skilled and semi skilled, in the ratio of sixty forty. Now those guys are seeing this thing that we employ the workers in the ratio of sixty forty. So sixty forty is supposed to be the standard also. It is supposed to be actual also, beta. Okay. So therefore. Even these particular hours, sixty percent will be there for the skilled workers, and forty percent will be there for the semi-skilled workers. Okay. <coughs> Further, the hourly wage rate paid was fifty per hour for skilled and forty per hour for semi-skilled. If you see my actual data, no, fifty per hour and forty per hour. Okay. The working week hours are forty per worker, forty hours per worker. Okay. So every worker works for how many hours in a week, beta? Forty. If nothing is told, they should have also worked for forty hours only. This line I will use for fixed job. It's not right now. Further, standard wage rate is same for skilled and semi-skilled. See, standard wage rate was fifty per hour. That wage rate is supposed to be the standard wage rate for skilled and semi-skilled. So see what I did. For ten units, fifteen minutes was supposed to be needed. Fifteen minutes means zero point two five hours. In the ratio of sixty is to forty. That is three is to two. These guys were supposed to be paid at what rate, beta? Fifty per hour. So therefore, this was supposed to be your cost. You always prepare revised standard for actual output. So therefore, actual output was this much. So you revise it. Okay, for ten units, this much. So for ten units, point one five. For one ninety one two hundred, how much should have been the hours as such? Okay, you calculate this to be paid at the standard rate. That is fifty rupees. You calculate this entire thing. Okay. Once you will do that. Now actual data. This was again a tricky part. Okay. Uh, 125 workers are there. Out of that, 60 percent means uh, 75 workers. 75 workers must be the skilled workers, and everybody works for 40 hours. 75 into 40, 3,000 hours will be the skilled labor. Apart from that, same thing. 125 into how much percent, beta? 40 percent. That is 50 workers into 40. So therefore, 2,000 must be your semi-skilled workers. At the rate of 50 and 40. So therefore, this was your actual labor cost. Once you have your entire data with you, every question becomes simple. But to get this data, I do not think in India many people would have got this particular answer. In case you have got, then brilliant job done. Okay, too proud of you. It's not that this question is a final C or something. Absolutely not. Okay, this questions like this we have done. Just you have to try to read the things. In fact, we have done so many questions where by number of workers was given here. Just that to make this is the only thing that you might be requiring some brains. Total labor cost variance, this figure minus this particular figure. Then I guess in part two we have been asked labor efficiency variance also. One is labor cost variance, one is labor efficiency variance. Efficiency variance is how many hours we should have taken, how many hours we have taken into in this case the standard rate. That is whatever I have done over here. That is this answer. Okay. Then lastly, it is fixed overheads. Now fixed overheads. For one thing, I'm saying this thing uh, again and again. So therefore, like you know, whenever you try to be solving, okay, few people make some assumption which are not required. Okay, you make an assumption in absence of information. You don't make an information when some information is there, but you cannot be cracking it. Okay, that's super important. Listen, 
मंथली फिक्स ओवर एट्स आर बजरेट टू बी सेवेंटी सिक्स थाउजेंड फोर एटी ओवर एट्स आर इवनली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड थ्रो द मंथ अज्यूमिंग फोर वीक्स इन अ मंथ इन द लास्ट वीक ऑफ द मंथ एक्चुअल फिक्स ओवर एट्स वॉज नाइनटीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड आई गेस वी आर डूइंग ऑल द थिंग्स फॉर द लास्ट वीक ओनली सो दे फॉर नाइनटीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड इज योर एक्चुअल फिक्स ओवर एट्स फॉर अ वीक ओके देन एक्चुअल फिक्स ओवर एट्स वी हैव एक्चुअल आउटपुट ऑल्सो वन नाइनटी वन टू हंड्रेड वी ऑल हैव ओके Budgeted fixed overage. This much is there for one month. One month is to be distributed over four weeks. Those guys have uh, told you so. Divide by four and write down over here. Now, in one week, how much output should have come out? Now, this is supposed to be like you know, whereby some people make some stupid assumption, try to be getting the answer. But this is how you should try to get the answer. Any other way, you might have done. If luck by chance you have got two lakhs, then it is luck by chance only. Okay. But this is how it should have been done. How? Listen, you had one twenty-five workers, no? You have one twenty-five workers. Everybody should have worked for forty hours. So therefore, total number of hours in this case will be five thousand. This five thousand is exactly this five thousand only, beta. This five thousand, in this case, no, is something like this. These are the hours that we all have. These are the hours that we all have. Let's convert it into minutes. So therefore, into sixty. These are the minutes that we all have. Okay. So therefore, I think five thousand into sixty will be making that thing as three lakh. So therefore, you usually have three lakh minutes in a certain month. You usually have three lakh minutes in a certain week. Sorry, so not not a month in a week. Okay. Listen. Uh, for every ten units, see over here. For every ten units. How many minutes should have been taken, beta? Fifteen minutes. So therefore, you have three lakh minutes with you. You cross multiply. You should be making a uh, two lakh. This is not my finger. Sorry. Uh, so you got to be. You should have produced two lakh units in a month. So therefore, once you compute this two lakhs, then the job is all together done. I'll repeat it once. In this month also, workers have worked for how many? Hours five thousand in a usual sorry not month beta week 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 in this particular week we had one twenty five workers everybody had worked for forty hours no we simply say in a month also a uh, week we simply say in a week also the workers should have worked for five thousand hours but if they would have worked for five thousand hours in one week how many units they should have produced so therefore five thousand into sixty will give it three lakh minutes. For every ten units, fifteen minutes was supposed to be needed. In three lakh minutes, they should have produced how many units? Beta two lakhs. Once you compute uh, two lakhs, then it is very simple. Okay. After that, you can start to be computing your three uh, variances under fixed overhead. So absorption rate is equal to this upon this beta. Then your first variance, total overhead cost variance, actual output into absorption rate minus your actual fixed overhead. This will be giving you first variance. Second variance, expenditure variance is a difference of these two. Volume variance is a difference of these two multiplied by your absorption rate. As this figure is lower than this, variance is going to be adverse. Check it. So as simple as that. But to calculate this two lakhs again, I think very few people in India would have calculated this particular thing in this manner. Originally, when I say the answer will be coming out, it will be done. in this particular manner you can get it by some other way also okay but that way is not correct as such that is not how it should be done okay i'll tell you that particular way but if somebody has done that i don't know mostly institute will be giving it wrong only you actually purchase 25000 kgs of material that was there in the question no somewhere 25000 into 8 Somebody can be saying two lakh will be coming out with that, but I do not think so. This is how it should be done. Okay, twenty five thousand is actual purchases. You should not try to be using that particular thing because actual purchases will reflect your efficiency or inefficiency also. So there is a wrong way to be getting the standard output. Okay, that's it about this particular question. Then, ah, uh, further. The following information has been obtained from financial accounts and cost account. Financial accounts, factory overheads, admin overheads, and selling overheads, opening stock and closing stock and indicate under or over recovery and their effect on cost accounting profit. Okay, so in financial account, this is the figure. In cost account, this is the figure. In costing expense is less, no, so profit will be higher. Okay, so costing profit will be higher. Will be higher than admin overheads. 
I guess here also this is 60, this is 57. In costing expenses lower, profit will be higher. Selling overheads, here it is higher. So therefore, costing profit will be lower. Further, opening stock. Opening stock is higher in costing, so therefore profit will be lower. Closing stock is higher in costing, so profit, if closing stock is high, profit is high, no? This is under recovery, sorry, this is under recovery. This is in this case your uh, over recovery. This is over valuation. This is also your over valuation. Okay, further. How does employee turnover increase the cost of production? This is exactly the same thing that was there in theory also. I've written exactly, I have copy pasted whatever like, you know, uh, we all have learned or whatever we all have done in theory. This was part of your uh, labor costing, one of the questions only, question number 21. Okay, how does it increase all those things I have. Now, last part like always is your theory part complete question on theory everything was there in our book only define cost object this was there in chapter um, uh, number one i have printed the solution of that i have just copy pasted from there only beta okay then what do you mean by practical and normal capacity that was there in our overhead chapter how is normal capacity uh, determined it is determined by using the average figures of past year and practical capacity is a capacity you can use this is the capacity we all wish to be using okay so that answer also i've printed over here then further in this case what do you mean by activity based management this was there in our uh, activity based costing chapter okay so uh, you all can write down the answer for that okay then further part d suggest any one basis of apportionment of the service department over the production the following uh, instances exactly the same question was my overheads theory part okay in overheads theory this was supposed to be the last question that was there and all these things were all discussed over there exactly the same particular thing in fact i've written more than one basis also for each and everything that you might be interested and lastly in this case how will you treat your normal loss abnormal loss and abnormal gain in process costing so complete note to also i have over here okay that's it now towards the end i am only saying one small thing costing or any other subject no you are only going to be doing good in your studies in ca inter and mainly in ca final if you have knowledge which is not mugged up knowledge don't ever try to be thinking that my teacher is supposed to be doing every type of question in this world no your teacher has one big task in life and that is to make you have the concepts right concepts and great knowledge that is whatever teachers are there a good teacher is one who will get you decent marks but whose concepts will be there with you for lifelong that is the definition of a good teacher and that is whatever you should always try to be doing as a student concentrate on concepts practice yourself more don't try to be thinking that the teacher has done this thing and ultimately i'm going to be doing only this much it is not like that that is why we all have practical question that we all solve in the class i give you a lot amount of homework those people who will do that would have found this paper super simple okay and we try to hold a test after each and every chapter and after the entire examination means after all the chapters are done we try to have full-fledged kind of mock papers so we do more than around 20 tests for you all so therefore you all are confident that whenever you all see new questions it is not an anxiety issue you should be able to deal with the new questions here okay so all the best now one last thing those people who want this solution my telegram id is at the rate aj next you send a message over there with your name with your phone number and with your attempt first attempt if it was may 23 you write down that also if it is november 23 then in that case you can write that also one small news on our present app that is available on android which is available on uh, ios and which can be running on laptop also we have chapter wise courses also so in case you are weak in any chapter the entire course of that chapter along with the classwork homework section apart from that full tests 
completely is available at 99 rupees only i would like to tell to everybody take advantage of that it is almost like you know we are trying to give this thing free to every student so whichever chapter you are not good at learn that in a perfect way through these kind of courses that we all have learned that will help you a great deal for your examination okay all the best this thing i have for costing also this thing i have for fm also we are going to be launching for other subjects also chapter wise only at 99 rupees okay thank you guys all the best for any inquiries that you might have or any doubts that you might have this is our uh, number that is there further any study related doubts can always be asked on telegram on this particular id at the rate hnx god bless you guys bye